Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through our new authoring experience. But before I do so, I do want to make note that this feature will be enabled globally on all tenants on August 9th. However, if you want to preview this before then, and you are a tenant admin, you can go into your settings configuration within your management console of your tenant, and you can go to the feature preview section, and you can toggle on the create chart and default sheet behavior. Now, if you toggle that on, you cannot turn it off. As you can see here, mine has been enabled, but you can revert back to the classic design view within the user interface. And that will make more sense shortly as I demonstrate that to you. A couple things just to note is that this particular feature has been enabled based on extensive user feedback. And it's basically going to update the way the sheets are created with a new improved visualization and creation experience. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna move over to a app which has data and I'm going to create a new analytics sheet. Now, when doing so, there's a number of different sections that we can cover here. I do want to point out, as I mentioned, if you want to go back to the classic design experience, you can click on the advanced options toggle and that will bring you there. A couple things to point out is that not all properties or parameters for all the chart objects have been exposed in the new authoring experience. Additional features and capabilities are always coming with our continuous release cycle but there might be times you need to switch back to the advanced options or the classic design experience to work with certain properties or parameters for your chart objects. The other thing to keep note of is that if you create a custom layout with your different charts, for example, these particular layouts will be maintained if you go back into advanced options, but they cannot be adjusted there. And you can see that by the unlock sheet buttons for the layout. Now, if you unlock them, it's going to default back to that particular grid style. Okay, so keep that in mind. So what we're going to do now is just go back and just delete these objects. Okay, so just a quick word on the advanced options or the classic design view versus the uh, new authoring experience. Okay, another thing to point out is the source table viewer. So this particular table is not part of your dashboard. However, it allows you to visually inspect the elements, your fields, your data values. You can choose your particular table if you wish. You can select rows per page. You can select your page and you can paginate through the data. If you want to hide this, you just toggle on the source table viewer in the bottom right. If you wanna add a new sheet, you can always click on the sheets view, or you can click on this plus button here. You have a data properties and a visualization properties, which I'll talk about momentarily. And then you also have your fields and your master items. Quick word on the master items, just like you already have used in the past, basically creating reusable expressions for your dimensions and your measures that you can use multiple times within your charts. It also creates a reusable library of objects for others to use to create charts when they contribute to published sheets. Within the field list, we have a list of all of our fields, our table selector, uh, the ability to actually uh, add data to the app from here if you wanted to. And you can see that the fields have classifications such as strings or dates or a geospatial for maps and numerics. Now you can also click on a field and immediately filter on a particular value while you're doing your development. And you also have a view of like a histogram or frequency of the occurrence of those values. You have your auto chart capability. Basically when that is set, dragging and dropping will use the uh, best representation of the visualization for your data. And we're gonna go into that next. So for this example here, we're just gonna look for a field with sales. And you can see I have a numeric field called part sales or my measure. I'm just gonna drag that. And I have these targets I can drop them on here. I'm gonna, instead of using drop field as a suggestion, in this case, it would be a measure using the classification. I'm just gonna drop the field as a measure. 
and you can see total sales of all the data is 42,000. Now we're gonna look at this information by country and I'm just gonna drop this as a dimension and because the auto chart is selected, it's gonna now create a, uh, a geospatial map. And you can see it automatically highlights the uh, countries with the appropriate range of values. Now there are uh, presentation settings for your chart objects. Here we can just add labels to the chart. Sales by country. I can also choose a color for the title. Subtitles, footnotes. I could also change the font and the size. Okay, so some new options that are available within styling for your particular chart objects. If I wanted to change the chart, I could just click on vertical group bar, for example, or horizontal group bar, and you can see presentation settings will change per chart. We're just gonna go back to the auto chart and use the map. Now, if I wanted to add another object, I just click add item here. And then once again, we're gonna use our sales figure. And this time we're gonna create a trend or uh, sales over time. I'm gonna search for my order date. Drop that as a dimension. And now we have our line chart. Now, if I just wanna move a chart object, grab this handle here and just put it to the location where I want it. Now we're just gonna change this chart. Select order date, click delete. And then I'm gonna search for another dimension called model variation. I'm gonna drop that as a dimension. And you'll notice now you can add individual filters per chart object. Think of this as adding a set analysis expression if you're familiar with the term. Instead of having to add the measure within the formula of the particular chart object, you can actually just add a filter here for a number of different conditions. So we're gonna filter on model variation and you can see that we can choose individual values. We can exclude them. We can perform a particular search with a contains, matches exactly, starts with, ends with, beginning of word. We can choose a condition. Select the general condition. And we're gonna look at the aggregation of sum for my sales measure. And at this point, I'm interested in anything that is greater than or equal to 14,000. As you can see, the filter's applied and we have restricted our values to arcade sticks and control pads, 14,000.8 and 22,000.4. Okay, so that's all I have to show you. Um, of course, stay tuned for a lot more capabilities and features coming to this new interface. Hopefully this was helpful. Please let me know what you think in the comments below where this video was posted. Take care, guys.